Blazing 1023, Tallahassee's number one for all today's hip hop and RB. It's Sunday night, it's 8 o'clock. You already know what's good. It's yours truly, Stess the MC. And like usual in the building, got my brothers DJ E Zone and DJ A to the L. But tonight we got something extra special. I'm gonna let you introduce yourself, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rampage, the first lieutenant representing that universal flip mode squad. Land to land, C to C, state to state. Deep freeze is the movement. Flip mode is still a squad. And if you hating on us right now, fix your face. <laughs> All right, being a member of Flipmo Squad, that's how a lot of people know you, but anybody who's anything of an aficionado knows that you actually had a record deal before that, and uh, I believe you were signed with Dallas Austin, is that correct? Yes. How did that happen? Because everybody knows the bus to connect being family, but how did you get hooked up with Dallas Austin in the early 90s? All right, I got hooked up with Dallas Austin because Buster had a production deal with Rowdy Records, and him and Buster was great friends, and then one day Buster gave me a call and was like, yo, man, Dallas Austin gave me a situation, and um, I want to I wanna give you a situation. And I got the situation, and the first record I put out, Beware the Ramp Sack, so salute Dallas Austin, salute Atlanta, salute Roddy Records, salute Arista, but definitely putting me first on wax. So then we fast forward from that, and uh, why I got you in the studio, I want you to know I have a cassette tape that, that you are going to autograph for wow. me. I brought it with me. Real fan stuff. I don't stuff. got one of these. <laughs> I've had it for a long time, Ooh. so I need to get this autograph today. So if you kind of explain to people, because your, your first solo album, I guess, officially with Flip Mode, uh -huh. came out in about, what, 97? 97. So how did that really come about? Because, I mean, you're a relative unknown. Was it really uh, Buster's co-sign that brought you into Electric because he was on a label? Like, how did that work out exactly? Well... A lot of people don't know, you know, Buster, yes, he's my first cousin, and, um, um, you know, I, I've just been doing this before all of that. I've been in the studio with uh, my cousin, which is Baxman, who produced Wow for the Night, and at the time, I didn't know Baxman was producing Leaders of the New School, and then, you know, back in the days, you know, me and Buster grew up with each other, but we kind of lost contact with each other. He moved to Long Island, but we were, we, we, we from Flatbush, Brooklyn, and, um, there was a time in my life, you know, I, I was on the block watching Special Ed, watching Chub Rock, because those are the guys from around my way. And, you know, I used to see Special Ed battling a lot of people at the park, at the park. We used to go to the school we all went to called 181 Park, and we used to be out there on the weekends. And they were just battling, 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 but I was just riding my BMX bike. I wasn't taking it seriously. And then, you know, you know, I, um, I, got, a, I got an opportunity to record a demo. Back then, they was calling them demos. And Baxman was in the hood charging everybody $20 for four hours at that time because he was just recording everybody. And a couple of songs I recorded was um, some demo joints. And then one day, Baxman called me one late night and was like, yo, man, I need you to come over here. And at that time, I was called Roger D. I hated that name. so. But um, I went around the corner to see what he want. He said, y'all want to introduce you to somebody. First person he introduced me to was Bus. I'm like, how you gonna introduce me to this dude and this dude is my cousin? And then ba and then Bus was telling him, that's my cousin. Then Baxman was like, Ramp's my cousin. So we were sitting there fighting over, we was all cousins, you know what I'm saying? Bus is my, my, my cousin on my on my father's side and, 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 and Baxman is my cousin on my mother's side. So again, you know, right timing is always good. I lost, but the first time I seen them back in the game, I was watching D from Pump It Up. I was watching Pump It Up and I saw leaders of the new school. I was like, hey, that's my cousin. Man, you don't know them. Get out of here. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's my cousin for real. For that funny thing, Baxman called me to the crib and then I've been on ever since. Bus was like, yo, man, I need you to travel with me. Come on. I mean, let me teach you the ropes. I went on the road and, you know, I was on the road with an L.O. and Ness, pick up to Brown, Milo. Um, 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 Dinko, Milo's my cousin as well. So I'm like, man, I'm on. I, I'm on. I'm, I don't know nothing about the road. My first trip for leaders of the new school is Roanoke, Virginia. I knew nothing about being on the road. First time seeing groupie snoopies. First time seeing everything go down. Um, I couldn't have been no more than 14. And um, the tour we was on was a, a, a tour with a uh, Public Enemy in '92. And the guy, Chris Thomas, was the host of BET. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know if anybody remember him, but he was the host at that time. So I've been on kind of ever since, like just riding with Bus. And then one day, Bus was like, yo, I ain't going to be with leaders no more. You want to do this flip mode thing? 
Jacks. I'm like, damn, this is my first time being on the road. Uh, yeah, I'm rolling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He gave me my experience of being on the road and just learning the ropes. And, you know, I salute my cousin for, for bringing me the light. Now, when we was uh, just chilling in the studio, you had a story, and you know, it, it gets rowdy on digging in the crates, but it really gets rowdy apparently at Madison Square Garden. It maybe you want to, for the listeners that might not know that story, if you might want to explain, you know, your uh, your side gig, I guess, stripping for New York City. If you want to explain that, pause. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I don't remember exactly what year, but it was summer jams. And there was a lot of people on the summer jam, Puff, everybody, Wu Tang, everybody. And, um, seen bus stripping. I said, dude, what you doing? He's like, F it, ramp, we're going in. Dude took his clothes off. And I seen Swift take his clothes off. And I took my clothes off. And then first thing we did when the clothes off, we didn't really care, was put your hands where my eyes can see. Then it just got into pandemonium. And then we did the whole show with our clothes off. Flip mode, butt ass nigga. And then I fell off the stage. They said that I need some Ben Gay. Shout out Phone Master Flip. <laughs> One of my stories. Get back to the flip mode situation. Like, how does something like that come around where you have so many like talented artists? Like, does that kind of grow organically or is it like you have to physically go out and grab like Rod Digger and be like, yo, you coming with us. Spliff, you coming with us. Sham, you coming with us. Or were y'all always like hanging out and it just kind of evolved into a group situation? I'm gonna tell you the story. Me and Buster went to a show, like a Lyricist Lounge show. I believe Q-Tip was hosting it. And we seen this girl on stage that was pregnant, rhyming. That's out to Young Z. I'm like, this girl is on stage, but she busting everybody down on the mic. Me and Bust was like, why? Bust was like, I need to go talk to Q-Tip. What's going on with Q-Tip? Don't worry about it, rap. I got this. He went over in the corner and was like, yo, what's up with old girl? He was like, yo, that's my artist. But she was on Electra. I was signed to Electra. Bus was on Electra. We was like, we need this flip mode. However, him and Q-Tip went in the corner and worked it out. All I knew was uh, a couple weeks later, my first lady of flip mode, Rod Digger. She's a beast. She was pregnant with a big stomach, just chopping down MCs like... You know what I'm saying? Like trees. We was like, are you serious? And she was she was lyrically just wow. Boom. She's a done deal. She's with us. My video shoot to take it to the street. Across the street from Queensbridge. This little kid came. Like, yeah, yeah, I spit. Me and Bus, me and Bus again. We outside. Yeah, I spit. Everything's all good. Bus like, yo, let me hear you, shorty. Oh, you dope. Right, stay to the video shoot. Weeks after that, Sham was with us. But we met him at my Take It to the Street video shoot. Spliff always been down. Him and Bust been best friends till there was no more wheels. They just been. I'm at the crib. Squeaky pulls up. That's what we called him, Squeaky. Squeaky pulls up in the BMW. Come upstairs. Ram, ram. It's my best friend, Spliff. What up, father? Yes. Yes, rude boy, man. Boop, 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 boop. No spliff just he just come him and buses like yin and yang. Weed and trees. Trees and weed. Them two is unstoppable. Spliff been down for the beginning. Lord have mercy is a dude from around my way. Who used to come to my house all the time because bus was in the house and that's where we did a lot of our writing at my crib in my room. I told Bus, yo, I got this dude from around, around the corner named Lord have mercy. He sound like Jesus. I said, he sound like Jesus Christ. He said, you bugging. I said, yo, Lord, come around here. Him and Bus hit it off. Months after that, he was signed. Then you have the, the whole flip mode unit. Then, you know, it, it, it's been previous members, but I wasn't there. I, I, I pretty much left because I needed to do my own thing. You know what I'm saying? But it had some new members. And, you know, you know I wish everybody luck. But Flipmo was the unit. The original unit is the unit. It ain't gonna get no bigger than that. Real talk. Bananas, bananas. Now we talked also in the studio uh, before we were doing the interview about about um, you 
you know, the different tours you have been on and all the different spots you have been. Like, what do you feel is the difference between, like, rocking a show in the U.S. right around now or going overseas to, like, a Europe, Japan type deal? Like, what's the difference in the audience? What's the difference in the reception you get? Well, the audience overseas that loves authentic hip-hop, they show more love because they appreciate the music. Now, it's like... To everybody, it's like it's dated back east. But when you go overseas, it's like it's brand new. They're walking around with original vinyl, pictures of yourself that you never saw before in your, in your life. Like, they salute real hip-hop. Right now, everything is just like a 360, so it, it'll come back. But I love overseas better because, again, they appreciate the music more. We don't appreciate the music more. We buy bootlegs, we copy it from our girls, we do all of that. We go overseas, they straight fans pulling out tapes. When I seen that tape, he pulled out my first album with tape. I wish I had one of those. Wait till but I again, go to the car. But again, <laughs> that's what I mean by classic moments. Like, if you don't have those type of things, it's like you don't remember those things. But when I go overseas, it's like everybody overseas appreciate me as a real MC. Appreciate other MCs as real MCs. And some of us never been overseas before. So that's a great experience to go overseas. You've never been over there before. And when you get there, they singing all your songs word for word and they don't even speak English. That was like like that's the best experience for me. I could relate to somebody to, you know, you it's cool over here. So when you dead over there, when you go overseas, you back. I had my swag back too. <laughs> so taking it to the 90s. Flavor in Your Ear remix. There's a lot of dangerous cats on that remix. Maybe kind of explain like your experience going into it. Like, I guess because you pretty, I mean, more or less would have been the underdog on that on that card right there. So like, how did you know Big LL, Bus, everybody that was on there? Like, kind of explain like how that came about, how you felt getting on that record and everything. Oh, okay. Um, one day I got a call from Buster Rhymes, and I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. I was soaking about that Beware of the Ramsack because it didn't do that well. So Bus was like, you got to get up and do it all over again. But brother, I got something for you. Like, what you got for me? Yo, I'm going to call you back in 20 minutes. Yo, what up? Yo, yo, no way. I got, I got Craig Mack on the phone. And at that time, the original version was just through killing, killing, killing the game. And he's, he he, he won't say what's up to you. Say what's up to you. Boom, I said, yo, what up, Mac? Paige, I'm a fan of you. Ha, 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 ha. Yo, what's going on? I, I, I need you on this remix, man. Me and Bus been talking for a minute, man. I told him I was a fan of you, my dude. Would you do the record? Nah, man. I told dude, no. I ain't want to be on the record. Hung up the phone. Peace, Greg, man. Bus called me back, said, dude, I'm telling you, ramp. You need to be on this record, my dude. Like, you need your cousin. I'm telling you, if you jump on this joint, you're going to be good. I was like, nah, that's so cool. Because I had my experience with the Red and Ramsack. It didn't do that well. It didn't blow like I thought it was going to blow. And I'm, I'm thinking everything is sucky. I'm going through that. So he said, all right, just come with me to the studio. So I went to, I went to the studio. As soon as I get in there, I see LL in the corner. I see Puff. I see Bus in the corner. Big laid his verse already, but they said Big was sick. But I seen him days after. I'm going in the studio. Craig Mack doing that. Moving all crazy. Yeah, I'm going to be there. I'm coming. I get in the studio. Bus finishing his verse. I'm listening. I'm in the corner vibing with him. Bus like, yeah. I'm like, nah, man, I'm cool. Puff said to me, yo, what's taking you so long? You helping everybody with their verses? Like, you need to be jumping on this record. So I didn't even think nothing about it. So I sat there for a minute. I'm looking at everybody in their own corner. Bus was sitting, peeking to see if I was going to go do it. So I went in the booth. It took me like 15 minutes. I scripted up something real crazy, and I left. I left Bus at the studio. Weeks later, that shit was the number one record in the country. That remix. Then they were calling me to do a video. I'm like, what? I don't, know. I, don't, I don't feel right. That was the best thing I could do in my life. Like, when when opportunities knock like that, you're supposed to take advantage of them. So I said, man, let me go ahead and do it. 
Yo, that, that, that's my first double platinum record ever. And I brought it, I, I came home and gave it to my mom. Like, like, like that's the best feeling because Buzz always told me, yo, man, you gotta always get up off your ass and you can't wait on no record labels. Now I understand what you're talking about. He wasn't supposed to be a wild for the night. Me and him was fighting about that shit, actually. We were fight, sorry about the play. Me and him was fighting, fighting on it because I didn't want him on the record. He was like, yo, if you don't like my hook, you can take me off. I was like, all right, cool. Backspin, come on. I did the vocals, him and Easy Mo be in the studio just going crazy over the track, just because I laid the vocals. He's like, yo, Ramp, I got this hook. Please let me get on this record. I, I promise you, brother, if I get on this record, I'm up. I'ma do. I'ma do something to it. I said, "All right, man, go ahead, boss." Because I didn't have no ideas, but me and him was fighting because I didn't want him on my record. Because you know, you're a new artist. You want to bust out your debut. You gotta be crazy. But then I didn't understand that being affiliation. You know what I'm saying? When you when you affiliated with something that's a, already an entity in hip hop, it made it that much stronger, and it helped a lot of things far as selling records. I didn't understand that at the time. Man, as soon as this dude jumped on my record, I'm like, you got that. The test press was done in four days. Sent it to Funkmaster Flex. I was number one in the country in six weeks. Kid from Brooklyn, who would know? I got my spark back just because I took an opportunity on Flavor in Your Air. It helped me again when it was time, because after I did that, Sylvia Roman and them wanted to sign me. On the strength of Buster, but they wanted to sign me because I was always with him. And I was always behind him doing the coming. We did the coming album. A lot of that stuff was written in my in my room in Brooklyn. Well, that was, you know what I'm saying? Wu Hart was the last record we wrote, and it was originally my record. Wow. Because Richard Smith gave the record to me, and me and Buster, again, arguing like, yo, Paige, let me get that. Record. <laughs> and it was on the tape. But you know what? That's my physical. That's my cousin. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, hold that. Also, I had Wild for the Night at the same time. So again, you see how that works? Got a trade-off. You know what I'm saying? I got a trade-off, but also I got a deal out the situation. Also, I was able to feed my family. Also, I was able to take care of myself. Also, I'm not back on the block no more. Also, when I come back on the block, special ed and all them ain't the man no more. I'm the man right now. So now what? Flatbush, here we go. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and it just, you know, yo, bus, I, all I can say is he changed my life. And if you got somebody that's behind you, that's constantly telling you to do X, Y, and Z, you never know until you take that opportunity. My homeboy JC always asks this question of every artist that come up to the station. We in the studio, we walk outside, we open this door, there's a time machine sale right there. What era would, do you want to go back to? Like, what's your favorite point? Why? Where would you go back to and why? I would go back to that session and flavor in the air. <laughs> I would go back to that 94 session because then that's when the game was pure. That means it was real. That means we were supporting each other. That means we was doing collaborations, not the same collaborations with the same people with new people. And we would just, it, 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 it was more... So records were more selected before you put it out you knew it was dope you played it for a couple of your people that type of era it was it was bigger than demos it was damn i got a rocket in my pocket i'm ready to bring this to funk master flex and them right now that's as soon as you recorded it it was at flex i, I missed that era that one the hand-to-hand -hand combat i i missed that the game doesn't have that no more. that is lost and those who got hit records they stumble on them then we were making hit records. They stumbling on hit records. There's a difference. And, and a lot of those records are not going to be classic like the records that we put out because we set the tone for this type of music now. So I would go back to 90. Do you, do you think there's a way we can bring that type of era back or that feeling of how we made hits before? Like, is there, is there a way we can get back to that? Yep. Listen to that rampage. <laughs> Everyone Ain't Loyal album. The name of that album is called Everyone Ain't Loyal. It's everybody in the industry ain't loyal to this situation. And I guess to bring it full circle, uh, you had mentioned earlier when we were chilling in the studio, you are working with a lot of cats and everything. What are some of the upcoming projects, stuff that people can look forward to coming up? Um, I'm doing a collaboration with R.A. the Rugged Man called the Blues Brothers. I'm doing a joint with me and Mr. Cheeks. 
called the BQE. I'm doing the joint. Shout out my dude Kappa Don. We just finished a joint called Forever, produced by Felony Music. All produced by Felony Music, which is my cousin from Philadelphia. Um, I'm working on. I, I did a joint with Flavor Flav. I did a joint with Mike Geronimo. I did a joint with Ed OG, Master Ace. I do records with people like that because, again, we still here. I'm about to do a joint with Chip Food. I'm just, 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 just everybody that was from that era that's still rocking and is willing to rock. I did joints with Craig Mack, new joint. I'm going to send that to you. I, I, just that era, man, that, that era is missing. We, a lot of us dudes from them times need to be moving right now. Like me, I'm moving forward. I'm not, I could do records with anybody. I'm the Liverpool lieutenant, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a selfish question, man. Um, you know, everyone... See Rampage, they gonna be ask you about Buster, they gonna ask you about flip mode, all that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows me, knows I'm the biggest EPMB stand. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my god brother DJ Scratch. I'm saying, man, what what we can make that happen. Scratch is a beast, bro. You want me to make that happen? You could make that happen. You could make that happen all day long. You wanna go on the show? Word up. Done deal. Word up. Give you Scratch number when we get off. That's what's up. We'll make it happen. What's what's it like to work in the studio with someone who's not only a beast on the turntables but also on the board? What's it like to work with Scratch? Well, as we would say, I don't know if you remember Buster Records, he, he would be like Saddam Hussein. Like, Scratch is Saddam Hussein. Like, he's the one that created that flip mode sound. So, you know, he's just a, a, a beastly producer. He's not just, he's more than a DJ, man. He's he's a good family dude. Um, His soul is just music, man. He, he, he He's just a beast at what he do, man. And he... He, he has a sound and a trademark that he's the only producer that could really give us that sound. Like He's like our Molly Maul, you know what I'm saying? When we, when we do flip mode, we definitely got to grab them joints from Scratch. It's like, you listen to All Bust, the first album, you listen to our album, like Scratch got this, this big sound that just will, that do internally damage your chest. <laughs> So, you know, salute Saddam Hussein, DJ Scratch, the original DJ Scratch. I salute you, your god brother. I love you. I guess uh, my, my last question, since we're pulling favors and all, uh, my favorite female rapper, female MC of all time is Rod Digger. And I, not necessarily get her on the show, but I'm trying to get her pregnant. Oh, wow. Is there any way you can help me facilitate that? <laughs> since we're pulling favors. Big brother, I can't help you on that one. But but again, I'm gonna pull another favor to get her on the show, and then you can do your one on one fizzle. And then when I tell her that you're trying to get a pregnant, she gonna bring it up. So remember, <laughs> I, I spread it the word. Now nah, I'm just playing, but I'm gonna definitely speak to Digger, Di, and tell her, you know, y'all my peoples, y'all good peoples, and we'll have her on the show. It ain't that's just a phone call. It's always a pleasure to have artists of your caliber come through, man. Yes, yes. We, I salute y'all. No y'all doubt, man. Y'all classic to the game, too. Appreciate I ain't the only classic. Y'all classic, too. <laughs> Word up. I got the age on it, too. Man, nah, man. We ain't aging. We only get better. <laughs> but yeah, man, like, you know, we're going to be playing a lot of Rampage joints here. You know, we are going to be playing a Remington still. Word up. The real EP. Yep. I want everybody to go to um, iTunes to cop that real EP. Thank y'all for having me in the studio. Anybody want to get at me direct at The Real Rampage on Twitter, at The Real Rampage on Instagram. Hit me on Facebook, The Beat Producer. You got them beats in the back pocket. We're going to get to it in about 20 minutes. <laughs> Shout out Backpack, the producer, I see you. Um, hit me up, Roger Rampage McNair on Facebook, at The Real Rampage on Twitter, at The Real Rampage on Instagram. Anybody got any questions can get at me directly. I ain't on no Hollywood boogie sh And if anybody hating on anybody in this room, my new motto is fix your <laughs> face. Salute. <laughs>